Hello everyone. I am Ms. Garcia, fourth grade teacher at Teague Elementary, and we are going to start our lesson today, our math lesson on representing data. We are going to continue using those frequency tables on a dot plot, but today we're going to use decimals and fractions on that dot plot. I want to tell you that another name for dot plot is, dot plot is a line plot. So you might hear dot plot or a line plot, but it's all on a number line. So let's take a look at how we can solve problems. This is 4.9a. First of all, let's talk about this dot plot. A dot plot shows how frequently something occurs and uh, it's displaying the data on a number line. A, a dot plot is also called a line plot and that's what it says here. Um, for a dot plot, you're going to need your number line. And the number line is down here. It's got the arrows going both ways. This one focuses on fractions. Starts with the zero, then you see the one whole number, and it goes on to one and three quarters. So you have it divided into parts of the whole. You got the zero, one fourth, one half, three fourths, one whole, one and one fourth one and a half and one and three fourths. So let's see what this dot plot is about. Um, a chef for this particular one collects data to display how many cups of sugar he uses in a variety of recipes. Now he displays the data on this line plot to show how frequently he uses each of the amounts. So he's saying, um, these are the amounts I use. So he labeled it cups of sugar and recipes. These are the amounts of sugar that I use. And then he doesn't put a dot on them, but he does put an X. It's just easier for him to use an X instead of making a big dot or making the dot look like a zero. So he prefers using an X and that's fine because it's pretty much a, a picture graph, a bar graph. So uh, with the one fourth sugars, he's got two recipes for that. For the half a cup of sugar, he's got four three-fourths of a sugar. And you know what? I'm going to start organizing my information on here. I'm going to write down what he said. So right here, it's supposed to be a two. Two recipes call for a quarter cup. Four recipes call for a half a cup. And here he's got for the three-fourths of a cup, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's kind of hard to see it when it's on the computer. Six recipes. I'm going to put a six here. Only one recipe calls for one cup of sugar. Again, the, um, you've got two recipes here for the one four and a fourth cup, just like the fourth cup. Three for the one and one fourth, one and a half, I mean, I'm sorry. And then one for the one and three fourths. So when I put my numbers on top, that tells me, that tells my brain how many X's there are, how many uh, piece, uh, a little, uh, the number of data there is for each one of the cups. So this is what we're going to be doing today. So I'd like for you to join me in making a line plot. You can please get some paper, get some markers, make it colorful. Your brain likes to see color. And uh, let's give this one a try. Let's see what we can do with this one. All right, let me just move this up a little bit. Here we go. No. Okay. So here we are talking about different rides at a carnival and how much they cost. And we're going to also add a little bit of information here to make it a um, frequency table. And it's going to tell us how many people during the first uh, 30 minutes bought tickets to the different types of rides. You have the football throw, the dart throw, the goldfish toss, the balloon dart throw, horse race, and the ring toss. And what we're only focusing here is how the amounts that they paid for. How many people bought a ticket that was worth $1.50? How many people bought tickets that were worth 75 cents? And of course, when you're dealing with money, you're dealing with decimals. So this is what we want to start off with. We want to start off with our line, the lines right here, if you can please draw it. And then we have our, our amounts of money. And these amounts of money are going to be in the hundreds place, right? So you have zero dollars. You have... Um, 50 cents, I should have put a zero there, a dollar, a dollar fifty, two dollars, two dollars and fifty cents, and then three dollars, okay? I'm going to label this. This will be called the cost, so I'm going to put that on the bottom. 
So I'll give you a few minutes. You can uh, pause it if you want, uh, and then we can go on. So based on this, it says that during the first few minutes, three people bought tickets that cost $1.50. Two people bought tickets that cost $1.25. One person bought a ticket that cost $1.50. No one bought tickets that, bought $2 that cost $2.50. Um, one person bought a ticket that cost $2.75, and five people bought tickets for the ring toss, and those were 75 cents. So once you get that done, it should look like this. And as you can tell, right here between the zero dollars and, and uh, the 50 cents, I drew a little tick mark. This little tick mark tells me that right there is another quarter. So that's a dot that is going to be zero dollars and 25 cents. Here, I also put another tick mark because between $1.50 and $1, you have 75 cents, which is the, the data from right here. What about between the $1 and $1.50? What would you find there? Yes, this would be a dollar and a quarter. It's a dollar and 25 cents. Same thing here. This would be a dollar and 75 cents. I put another little tick mark. Here, it would be $2.25, another little tick mark, and the last tick mark will go between the $2.50 and $3, which would be $2.75. So this is out how we would break up and uh, use a dot plot for, fraction, for decimals. And let's say that they asked you to um, show us the total number of people that bought tickets during the first few minutes of the carnival, you would add them up. So you would tell yourself, okay, let me use my mental math. So five and four and one makes 10. Over here I have 12. So 12 people um, were the ones that uh, bought the tickets within the first few minutes. Okay. So that was decimals. Now let's take now let's take a look at the fractions. Here we have uh, Mr. Garcia's student. Uh, so they recorded the length of his or her foot, and this dot plot shows the foot length of his students. Okay, I see blanks here, but I see dots on top of them. So I want to talk to you about that. Uh, it looks like one student's foot measured six and a half feet. And then two kids measured something. And then four kids, I'm gonna start writing my numbers on top. There was one here. I want my brain to know what, how many dots, one, two, three, four. I can count up to nine dots and get it right. But when it's more than nine dots, I, I, I have trouble with that. Okay, and right here we have five. Let me put a five here. One, two, three, four, two, three, two, and one. Wow, one person had a foot size 10 and a half. So looking at these blanks, I see that the numbers that they do give me are six and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half, all the halves with the whole numbers. So if I was to look at this on a number line and I start at six and a half, my next whole number would be a seven and then seven and a half. After seven and a half, my whole number would be, what do you think? Eight and then eight and a half. I have nine and then nine and a half, 10 goes right here and 10 and a half. So it looks like two kids measured their foot and their size was size seven. And that's how we would do this. So your, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's the same thing. The uh, dot plot should look like this. If they were to ask you questions about this, now you could come back here and, and take a look at what, what is written. For example, what if they asked you how many more kids foot measured seven and a half than the kids that measured seven feet. So if I was to analyze that and they're asking me how much more, how many more kids uh, measured seven and a half feet, I know that I'm comparing them, so I'm gonna subtract. And if I was to plan it out, it would be the four minus the two kids, which equals two. And my answer in a complete sentence would be two more students measured seven and a half than than seven feet. And that is how we would use this line plot or dot plot to answer our questions. Whenever you do this, make sure you use your strategies. It seems like uh, so simple just to write the numbers on top, but uh, I'm telling you, it's very important. It's something that I hope that you do
whenever you answer some questions. So I'm going to tell you good luck on your work today and have a great day, Tigers. Bye.